I'm Dory Weintraub, faculty member at Duke University and co-PI of the ARIS Center. Today I'm going to be talking to you very briefly about a project that we've recently undertaken at the ARIS Center to reach out to minority serving institutions or MSIs to get a better sense of their perception of how they benefit from the NSF broader impacts criteria. Unfortunately, I don't have much time to go into the details about why we undertook this project or the methods that we used. So I invite you to pause the presentation and read the information on the slides. This slide gives you background on the broader impacts criterion, broadening participation efforts, and why we undertook the project that we did. This next slide gives you a brief sense of how we uh, carried out the project. And essentially we conducted an anonymous online survey which was distributed to faculty at minority serving institutions all across the country to ask them several questions about their perceptions of the broader impacts criterion. Unfortunately, we had a, a much lower response rate than we were hoping for, but nonetheless, we do feel that we got some information that was useful. So the first few questions were just really about demographics. We were trying to get a sense of who was responding. And as you can see from this slide, the majority of the response, responses that we got came from HBCUs, historically black colleges or universities, or HSIs, Hispanic serving institutions. We also asked the respondents who they were. And as you can see, the vast majority of them, nearly all were faculty, uh, faculty or instructors. Uh, there were a couple that identified as researchers and a couple that identified administration. But by and large, it was faculty that were responding. We then asked them, how familiar are you with the NSFBI criterion? And you can see that three quarters of the respondents said that they were either very or moderately familiar with the BI criterion. Interestingly, a quarter of the respondents were not at all familiar with it and yet completed the survey. We then asked them, in your opinion, do you, does your institution or do your students benefit from the NSFBI criterion? And again, you can see there was a pretty broad range of responses here. About a third of respondents said that they, their institution or their students greatly benefited uh, but there were definitely responses in the moderate, slightly, and not at all range as well. So um, interesting to look at this and see how respondents felt they benefited or didn't benefit from the broader impacts criteria. We then asked them, if you feel that your institution, you or your students are benefiting, uh, talk about the ways in which you benefit. And some of those are listed here. I'm not showing you all of them, but a few choice ones. Again, some really interesting responses here. And I invite you all to uh, connect with me during the um, slide session where you can be meeting with presenters online so we can talk more about these results. Similarly, we asked respondents, if you don't feel that your institution, your students, or you benefit from the broader impacts, why not and what changes could be made? Um, and we really only got one response here. I'm showing you this response and again, um, sort of an interesting comment. I'd love to, to talk a little bit more about it with you. So if you want to um, meet me in the um, online poster session, then we can talk more about this response as well. Finally, we asked the question, um, if in what ways could ARIS support you, your students, or your institution with respect to broader impacts? And we got a lot of interesting answers here. I'm clustering them into two groups. This first group um, gets at some of the ways that we could directly work with these institutions to help them respond better uh, or benefit more from the broader impacts criterion. Um, the second group clustered here at the bottom really has more to do with how the NSF approaches broader impacts. And so our ability at ARIS to be able to really affect this uh, is a little bit more um, unclear, but there are ways that we could maybe work with this information and relay it to folks at the NSF to start thinking about some potential policy changes around um, broader impacts. I just wanna mention really briefly that in addition to doing this survey, we did ask if respondents would be willing to talk further with us over Skype uh, and a, a number of respondents said they would. And so we had some follow-up interviews via Skype with some of the respondents. Again, I don't have time to share any of the results, but would be happy to talk about them with you more in depth if you join us during the online poster session. Uh, similarly, we asked, would you be interested in working with ARIS's MSI subcommittee? One respondent in, indicated an interest and we've invited that individual to join the MSI subcommittee. 
Finally, I just want to quickly acknowledge the assistance that I got from my graduate student, So Phone Min, uh, who is a master's student with me at Duke University and really um, did a lot of the work uh, developing and conducting and distributing the survey. And I also want to acknowledge the members of the ARIS MSI subcommittee who are all listed here. Lastly, I want to um, it, again encourage you to visit me during the lightning talk poster, poster talk session, um, which will be 1 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, April 28th, so that we can really dig into some of these findings more and talk about what they mean. And lastly, I absolutely want to encourage you to attend the online panel discussion called MSIs and R1s, MSIs and Research One Universities, Successful Partnering for Broader Impacts, which will be held from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on Wednesday, April 29th. Thank you very much, and I look forward to talking to you more about all of these results.